Hello and welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. I'm Humble and today I want to dive into a little bit more why the new MK project and why I'm going that route versus keeping the zero. Uh, yes, you heard that right. Uh, I will be getting rid of the zero. I'll be selling it on after the MK is complete because I still want to drive it. I still want to enjoy the 7 lifestyle while we have some nicer weather. I know there's a lot of questions about why one kit versus the other. And I want to go over some of those little differences, some important differences, and just some of the experience that I've had with the Zero and with GBS so far. And some questions regarding those experiences that I can't quite answer about the MK experience yet. So let's get into it. So we're all familiar with the Zero. I've been building it on channel. I've had kind of small gripes from the, the beginning, uh, dealing with uh, shipping, what I ordered, and things that I still haven't received. So uh, originally when I ordered this car, uh, I wanted to get a soft top, which is just part of a rain kit. So some doors, a top that goes over the back, and it's not supposed to keep you you know, super dry. It's just enough to keep most of the rain off of you. Most seven kits, uh, or I should say most weather kits for sevens uh, have small openings around like the back of the door or uh, around the, the back kind of boot area. And so you will get some splash back, but it's enough to keep most of the water out. And well, I never got one. Um, they had made promises. I understand pandemic and all that, but you know, three years on, no weather kit. The parts that I do have, so this boot is actually a GBS boot, and while I wanted it and I ordered it, I didn't get this from GBS. I got it from my friend Sean, who received this as an incorrect part for his second gen zero. So through a roundabout method, I ended up with a boot cover that he couldn't use because he was supplied the wrong one. The other bits that I have, so for these straps, the bikini kit and the half doors, which are not installed yet, by the way, because I've been afraid to drill rivet holes into the top of the frame because I really don't want to crack this glass. All of those came from soft bits for sevens, which are sitting over to there. So yeah, I haven't installed those yet because I just, there hasn't been a need. And again, I'm afraid of messing up the windshield. A couple other gripes that I've had is uh, other parts I ordered and didn't receive is these half moons, they're supposed to be a carbon half moon that comes up here. Never got it, asked about it for about a year, year and a half through various emails and nothing. When it comes to getting those parts, among others, so there were some engine parts that I needed, there was some rear end parts that I needed, um, wipers that were supposed to come in the kit that didn't. Trying to get GBS to ship those parts, I could never get them to ship directly to me. They had to come through a third party. So they would put the parts in somebody else's kit ship the kit to that person, and then it would be up to that person to freight forward the parts I was waiting on to me. And likewise, I received parts for another person, and they didn't even tell me who it was for. And so I ended up with extra parts. And then when they finally did get to me, the person who was missing those parts had other parts sent to them. So it's just really frustrating because it adds additional time confusion and uh, a lot of frustration that Ultima just solves by shipping you what you ask for immediately and without question. So I don't know why GBS can't do that. Besides shipping issues, 
Uh, there's also some design quirks uh, that some people may not mind, uh, but I'm not a particular fan of with the, the Zero. Uh, one of which is the pedal box design. Again, this is a left-hand drive car that, you know, from a, a chassis and a maker that primarily makes right-hand drive cars. So when I received the parts, what I got didn't fit. They couldn't tell me what to use. So it involved a lot of trial and error in trying to get the right master cylinder to work with my brake setup. The clutch master cylinder was wrong from the get-go. I was supplied a second generation unit instead of the first generation. Uh, the way these pedal pivots sit is you sort of have to uh, drill out the arms that they already make to try and set a favorable angle for the push rod that goes into the cylinder. But in doing so, you greatly change the pedal ratio. So you'll get a shorter stroke on this side for your push rod and a really long stroke on the pedal. And while that might make uh, a good setup for like, you know, pedal feel or pedal pressure once you do get on the brakes, I found personally that I, I don't have a lot of confidence in the brakes. And again, comparing this to the Ultima setup, which I also had to tweak, I definitely like the Ultima more than this. And there's not a lot of customizability to this setup. So things are pretty stuck, pretty rigid, and you can't really change it too much. Other problems I had, speaking of brakes, is the car came pre-plumbed from the factory with brake lines uh, right here. And they were done all throughout the whole car. Once I got the whole system plumbed, the first time I went to use them, there was multiple leaks and brakes in that hard line in various spots in the car, whether it was over tightened, uh, T-junctions, under tightened in the back that was leaking. Uh, there was puncture, multiple punctures in the front engine bay that was like here on the side and then up on one of the, the junctions in the nose. Um, it was just a mess. So I ended up having to make my own brake lines all the way through the car, front to rear. For a supply part from the factory, it should have been tested and it should have worked, and that just wasn't the case. So I would call that, you know, kit car problems. That's just a kit car thing uh, from a factory not doing due diligence to follow up on the products they create. I get it, it happens. Uh, it just sucks when you have to deal with it after the fact, after the drivetrain's in the car. Again, stuff that could be improved with a little more R&D, like our belt tensioner. It's a set it and forget it, and there's no play. You just tighten it up all the way, and it's up to the belt to basically stretch into the right length. If it's too loose, you'll get belt squeak, and if it's too tight, you get belt squeak. Uh, and both conditions will accelerate bearing wear on uh, the water pump or the alternator. On the front hubs, we can kind of get a good look here. Well, these are ATR hubs. And initially, I was actually a really big fan of this. Uh, the GBS part, so this is their uh, performance brand. And they did their homework. Um, the brake caliper is really good. Their disc setup is really good. Uh, the additional Ackerman geometry up here on the steering arm, I mean, that's all set up. The thing I like most about it, it uses a modular hub bearing that comes out with like four bolts. And so you can quickly change the hub in and out of the car. And in fact, they have a bespoke hub setup for both the front and the rear. However, I only have the front setup because that's all they had going for the first generation cars. For the second gens, you can get both front and rear. Now, what I don't like about this setup is the front brakes are quite frankly 
overkill. You do not need a rotor this big and something as light as the 7. I think this is like a 12 inch rotor and as you can see it just barely fits with the caliper inside of a 15 inch wheel. Realistically I don't think I would run anything bigger than an 11 inch on a car that only weighs 1100 or 1200 pounds at most. The other issue is trying to source replacement parts. These are bespoke parts from a company in the UK. If I were to damage one side or break it at the track or something like that, trying to find another one based on the shipping issues I had in the past could take months. So again, something I'm not a real fan of just given the history. Uh, and that has informed decisions I've made for the next car. Lastly, it's a safety issue. Now on the Zero, all it has is a single roll bar. Yeah, it's thick, it's like two and a half inches or two inches or whatever, and it's a big main roll hoop, but that's it. Don't be fooled by, by these down tubes. Um, these rear braces don't. They just connect to the body back here and not to the chassis. And this floppy paneled aluminum isn't going to stop anything from this bar going over one way or the other. It's probably unlikely to happen, but I still don't feel comfortable going wheel to wheel with other cars on the track with just a simple roll hoop and limited protection otherwise. Um, no door bars, no main cage, you know, no window bar, no nothing. It's just this. I'm not super comfortable with that as a safety device. Now there's more that I'm leaving out, uh, but I don't want this whole thing to be just gripes and complaints about GBS company or the Zero kit. There are a lot of things that I do love about this car. Um, despite not having any instructions, it goes together pretty quickly and very easily. Um, it's, it was very easy to build um, because the factory had done a lot of the work ahead of time. Again, had I not had problems with the brake lines and everything was run and sealed up, that's a lot of work eliminated because uh, everything's tied to the chassis. Everything was ready to go. Uh, again, the bodywork was already white. It's white gel coat uh, or painted and all that's ready to go. I don't need to paint or anything like that. The seats, the interior, all that's super simple. It just goes together like Legos. The wiring was a bit of a pain and there wasn't as much direction, but again, because it's such a simple car with a limited number of circuits, it was easy to sort through on my own. I will give credit where credit is due and it did go together fairly easily, you know, once I had everything. When it came to the driving experience, it's, it's a seven. It doesn't matter really what engine you put in it. It could be a, a hot two liter like I've done, could be a base two liter, could be a base 2.5. Um, at any rate, you're still gonna have an amazing and super fun driving experience. And it's honestly one that I recommend to anyone. Despite this car being unsafe on the track, uh, out on the road, out on the street, it's an absolute blast. It always gets attention. It's so fun to drive and while it's not great on the highway, that's not the kind of car it is, but cruising through the mountains or cruising through town, it's just an absolute giggle. So from the Zero, why the MK and why the Indy? The MK Indy was the other choice that I had when I was first looking at a 7 build. And the reason I hadn't chosen the MK Indy is because at the time they did not support the Miata NC drivetrain or the Duratec engine, which was really what I was interested in. That's one of the biggest reasons that I chose the Zero is I wanted a modern drivetrain, a newer engine and transmission than, uh, well, the NA or NB Miata, which is almost 20 years old at its youngest. 
So going with the NC drivetrain, I get uh, a newer motor, a lighter platform, a newer transmission, and in a five-speed or a six-speed, I have those options available. So now the MK has that option. That being said, I didn't choose it because they had recently released the K Miata platform or putting a K series engine with a Miata transmission into the same car. And originally I wasn't gonna go K20 because I didn't want to spend all that money on drivetrain, but now having done the Duratec route, I am really curious to see what I can get out of a, a K20 or a K24 build. So I have some of the parts already set aside here. As mentioned previously, I've been collecting parts for this build for a while now, um, slowly getting things ready, rebuilding, refinishing, all the major parts that need to get done uh, in order to quickly build the chassis and the kit as soon as it arrives. We'll start with one of the important pieces here up top. So this is a fuel safe tank. I've worked with them actually quite a bit now. At least three of my cars, uh, well four technically, if you pick the, the two times that I had it done for the Ultima. But uh, fuel safe has always been a great company to work with. Uh, these are FIA rated and approved fuel cells. Um, I know they're safe. I know they're burn resistant. Um, I know they're burst resistant. Yes, you sacrifice a little bit of internal volume for anti-slosh or whatever, but for all of the technology and all of the features and you know, plus the internal bladder that's all built into this, it solves a lot of the problems that I've had with this car and all of the fueling problems that I've been dealing with. So um, this is an aluminum case with a fuel cell bladder inside. It has an anti-rollover valve in the filler neck. Um, under this central plate, we have pass-through wiring. We have an internal pump, which is, I believe, a Walbro pump, which is overkill for the engine that we're building. I use the same Holly Hydromat pickup that goes across the bottom of the tank. And then uh, we have our fuel level sender also already set up in the tank and ready to go. Besides the bladder, it's also filled with foam, keeping that anti-slosh down. And the idea is I want to make the MK car track ready, track capable, in ways that the Zero is not. And this is a big one. Over to the side here, uh, this is an NB uh, late model five speed, um, rebuilt by all standard transmissions. Um, I had them completely go through the transmission end to end, top to bottom, uh, replace anything that looked a little worn uh, in order to have as close to a new transmission as possible. New seals, new synchros, uh, everything, anything that had just a little bit of wear, we go ahead and replace. Uh, so this is basically a brand new five speed ready to go. In using a late model, there's a chance that this doesn't explode when paired to our motor of choice. Also in our drivetrain is, uh, I believe this is an early NA uh, Miata carrier and diff. So this is, it is a Torsen diff, but I've chosen to replace that with an OS Geekin diff. And why I was thinking this is because I hear tell that the OS Geekin has a smoother engagement. Now, the diff inside the Zero is a plated diff, but it is way more aggressive when it locks up. Um, anyone who's driven a car with an aggressive locking diff, you'll hear kind of like uh, chunks and catches when going around corners of the diff locking and unlocking and locking and unlocking. And it's very unsettling to, you know, people who don't know. And, you know, if you're not in the know, it just sounds like the car's braking as you go around corners, especially at lower speeds. 
Um, so hopefully this is going to be a little less aggressive on its engagement, which should also uh, help the, the car track a little bit smoother, uh, again, going around corners, etc. Now under that we have a used set of Miata knuckles, but uh, I've taken them apart. They still need to be refinished, but they are in fantastic condition. I think whatever car they came out of, uh, they had been rebuilt somewhat recently. Unfortunately, I had to take them apart to figure that out. Uh, so those will be rebuilt to new once we're getting ready. In fact, that's probably going to be happening here shortly. Uh, last but not least, here in the garage, of course, you might be staring at these very yellow F01NC wheels. Now, this will make a little more sense once I talk about the car itself, but this is going to be the color. So this is called a traffic yellow. It's a very robust and bright yellow in the sun, and this is actually the color of the chassis. Once the chassis uh, sees the light of day, it should be a dead-on match for these wheels, and I'm hoping that the body is close. The whole theme for this car is going to be uh, black on yellow or carbon on yellow, and so I really wanted a chassis or a body-colored wheel to match. Going with the same idea as the Zero with a white on white, uh, with these wheels it'll be a yellow on yellow. Okay, so now let's talk engine. I already mentioned that it's going to be a K-Miata. What did I go with? Well, I wanted to have a little more punch than the hot two liter in the Zero, but I didn't want to go with a supercharger or a turbocharger. I still wanted to keep it NA. I still wanted to have ITBs, and I still wanted it to make that glorious noise once you romp on it. That really leaves either a K20 or a K24. Kind of. So I've been keeping it sort of hush-hush, but I've been working with Mike Kojima down at Moto IQ Garage. And when I initially approached him with the car and the build, the first thing he came back with was doing a de-stroked K24. And that's not an option that I was even aware of. And so what we chose was a 2.2 liter D-stroked K24, which should give us sort of the best of both worlds. It'll wind out almost as far as a K20, but it'll have a little bit more low-end torque and potentially a flatter torque curve that will make it more predictable, have more usable power over a wider area, which will feel fantastic in this car. And ideally, it'll wind out to 9,000 to 9,500 RPM with a factor of safety built in. So he's putting that motor together with all of the knowledge that he's got gathered over the years. I've chosen to put all of the, the coatings, the treatments, you know, cryo treatments, uh, surface treatments. Um, I really want to build up a race engine and then dial it back for a factor of safety to run it hard on the street, run it hard on the track, and just feed it fuel and oil changes so it's dead nuts reliable. Now besides just the K24 block and head, we sent the head off to Drag Cartel to get their magic done. Um, we've sourced a dry sump assembly and pump from AT Power in the UK. And what's awesome about that is that everything's contained inside the pan. So the, the pump, the pickup, etc., is all in the oil pan. The oil pan itself is shorter than stock, uh, but there's no additional belts, nothing to get in the way, uh, no accessory belt or anything like that that you need to worry about. It's all chain driven using the factory oil pump location. Uh, so I'm really, really excited to see how that handles uh, aggressive road and track use. Being that it's dry sump, I'll have to run an additional oil tank just like the Ultima. Um, I plan to have an oil cooler on it like we did with the Zero and an external uh, oil filter, etc. 
Uh, I already have our ECU. I've already chosen that um, in keeping with black and yellow theme, although that's not why I chose it, uh, is we're going to run a Haltech uh, 1500, which should be more than enough for what I want to do in the car. But I do want to do some additional logging and have some better warning lights which I can drive with that ECU that I can't necessarily do with the limited ECU in the Zero. So I'm really looking forward to running additional sensors and collecting that data, having the ability to data log and then go back over all of that information later to hopefully catch any problems like oiling issues, uh, though I doubt we're gonna have that issue again. Currently, the only big partner that I can announce is Moto IQ, and that's because I've hired uh, Mike Kojima and company to build that engine, so we'll be working with them. Um, I'll announce other partners as we go along the way. Um, everything else I've purchased with my own money. Well, technically I purchased the motor with my own money, but it's been an absolute joy to work with those guys uh, from the start. And not only am I getting an engine from them, but I'm also getting one hell of an education as we go back and forth. And I can't recommend them highly enough from a customer standpoint. Uh, as with other folks, other vendors that I wanna work with, um, other builders or fabricators, um, I'll announce them as I'm able, but I really wanna build something special in this car and I'm super excited to finally announce it and to talk you through my process of going from one seven to another. So if you've watched this far in the video, I will tell you that this pile of tires that has been sitting here holding up our fuel cell for the MK, well, this is for the Porsche and this is for a new set of wheels that has finally arrived and these will be going on the car uh, this weekend. Um, there's also some other parts that are going on the car that will uh, be arriving soon. And all of that will make the Porsche track ready. And I'm hoping to get this car out on the track soon. So stay tuned for potentially a track day in the GT3 in the not so distant future. That's gonna do it for today. Um, there's still more to come with the MK build, with going through the parts, uh, sort of my design process or build process as it were. If you have any questions about why I've chosen one part versus another or one kit versus another, etc., leave the questions down in the comment section below and I'll answer them in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.